Greetings from San Francisco, California. After years of multiple delays and cost overrun, finally, the Central Subway has opened. Right now, I am at Union Square slash Marcus Street Station. This is part of San Francisco's four station Central Subway extension. Anyways, roll the intro. Hello and welcome to my trip report. Right now we are at the Powell Street Bart and Muni Metro Station. And we are headed for the Union Square Station on the Muni Metro. While the Powell Street and Union Square stations are both connected via an underground passageway, Muni Metro passengers will have to exit the paid fare zone in order to transfer between the two stations. Speaking of paying fares, services along the Central Subway were free for all passengers at the time of filming this video. In this video, we'll start at the Union Square station and then head north to the northern terminus of Chinatown. From Chinatown, we'll turn around and head back south all the way to the southern terminus of Forth and Brannan, where we will conclude this trip report. As I went down these escalators, it became very apparent that this is one deep station. In fact, the Union Square station is 70 feet below the surface. The Central Subway is a 1.7 mile extension of the Muni Metro consisting of three underground stations and one surface station. We will be taking Muni's special weekend only shuttle service that runs along the Central Subway. Services along the Central Subway was just the shuttle service, although services along Muni Metro's T line is scheduled to run on the Central Subway starting in January of 2023. I'd like to give you guys a quick history lesson on the Central Subway. While the Central Subway opened in November of 2022, planning for this project dates all the way back to the 1990s while construction started in the early 2010s. One event that led to the Central Subway was the demolition of the Embarcadero Freeway in the wake of 1989's Loma Prieta earthquake. Many Chinatown residents opposed the demolition of the Embarcadero Freeway, citing a loss of crosstown connections. Thus, the Central Subway was conceived in order to provide quick crosstown public transport access to San Francisco's Chinatown, among other reasons. As for the construction process itself, the project has faced multiple delays and cost overruns, with total delays amounting to approximately four years and cost overruns exceeding $300 million, pushing the Central Subway project's total cost to nearly $2 billion. We have now arrived at Chinatown Rose Park Station. The station was named in honor of Rose Park, a very prominent and influential but yet controversial political activist in Chinatown. Although she played a major role in getting the Central Subway built, Park was unfortunately unable to see the completion of the project as she died in 2016. While Chinatown serves as the current terminus, 
There are plans to extend the system to as far as the Presidio, and tunnels have already been dug to North Beach. One thing that was present throughout the new stations was public art installations. The entrance building for the Chinatown station okay. contains a public plaza on its roof, okay, yeah. although it was closed for the day at the time of filming this footage. Also at the station entrance, Muni staffs were giving out leaflets informing guests of the central subway. The Chinatown station lies okay. at a depth of approximately 100 feet, thus making it one of the deepest Muni metro stations. With the deep depth of various stations on the Central Subway, it is no wonder why the Central Subway costed over $1 billion for the city to build. Not only was the Chinatown station deep, but also quite spacious as well. Probably even a bit overbuilt for the amount of passengers that it will likely serve. This seems to be a thing throughout the Central Subway. The Central Subway shuttle service was operated using the Siemens S200, which first entered service in 2017. Since the train was sitting idle at the station, I decided to do a review of the train. The S200 comes in latitudinal seating or longitudinal seating. Also, these trains come with digital screens, which I find nice. One thing I found strange of this train was the placement of the stop, request, and door open buttons. In case you're wondering, yes, the train became a lot less crowded after Union Square Station. To be fair though, there wasn't much happening by the stations south of Union Square at that time of day. One thing I liked about this train is that you can still get the cab view even if you don't have access to the cab. This was especially handy in getting footage like this. The Yerba Buena Moscone Station serves the Moscone Center, which is the largest convention center in the city of San Francisco. Since we didn't visit the Yerba Buena Moscone Station that day, this is all the footage I have of the station. We are now exiting the underground section and entering the 0.4 mile surface section of the Central Subway. The surface section of the Central Subway runs along the median of 4th Street. Although the surface section of the Central Subway is short, it does feature one new street level station called 4th and Brannan, which is where we will conclude this trip report. Unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, I do not have as much footage of Forth and Brandon as I would have liked. As for the station itself, the station is just your average Muni Metro street level station. Although as with other stations on the Central Subway, there is a public art installation. 
my experience riding the Central Subway has been quite pleasant and interesting. In particular, it was fun to look at the new stations and all the artworks that were placed on the stations. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, don't hesitate to press the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button.